we want to uh, take a few minutes to talk about something in the religious community which of course shouldn't be a concern of ours but I think that there's a, a lesson there's something that we can learn from this particular situation this is why I would like to bring this up there are those who claim they know they know and some of them wasn't even alive during the time that they know because they do their research they have the facts they get the information I can give my opinion my observation my conclusion on something like the assassination of Malcolm X I was only two years old what do, what do I really know? I was two years old. In fact, I really didn't even learn about Malcolm X until the 80s. I never heard of the man. Even though I had relatives that was in the Nation of Islam, they never told me, I never learned. And to my knowledge, the books of the Nation of Islam, How to Eat to Live, Our Savior Has Arrived, Message to the Black, all, the, all these uh, books and never mention, talk about this person called Malcolm X. So I never, I never knew about Malcolm X. So whatever I say or bring is just my opinion. Nobody can bring facts because you wasn't there. You really don't know. I'm sold a story. You sell yourself a story. Somebody sell you a story. Of course, you don't expect the nation of Islam to confess and want to admit that they murdered Malcolm X that don't even make any sense of course you are trying to convert people you're trying to get people onto your slave plantation so that you can make money you want them to see you as holy and righteous as this good guy not a murderer not an adulterer Of course you don't expect them to anybody affiliated with Nation of Islam they don't want to be associated now in 1965 they actually celebrated the death of Malcolm there was no shame in their game but that's a bad look in 2022 so I, I want to try to push myself away from Malcolm's murder as far as I can it's not a good look but it was a good look in 1965 what I want to speak about real quick is after the death of Elijah Muhammad February the 25th 1975 I believe the nation of Islam went through leadership change. And you will go online and all these people, I've done my research and I got the information. and They go all, they want to try to get technical and complex about what they know, but they wasn't there. And those who were there, most of them don't want to talk about it. They're not going to say nothing. 
I'm very sure there are those who were there who are still alive. They're, they're not going to say anything. Most people don't talk about these things. Especially when they seem negative. Don't They feel foolish. They feel stupid. They don't want to talk. Ah, I don't want to talk about that. That's why a lot of us, we don't really have any information about slavery, Jim Crow, not from our family members, because that's a part that's a part of life. We feel embarrassed, we're helpless. You got somebody calling you a boy. You can only drink in you can only drink water out of certain it's, it's embarrassing. Nobody that's a chapter that nobody wants to talk about. But there is something that is talked about throughout the years. I just want to put my little two cents in on it because it has nothing to, to do well actually it does but most people agree with these facts because it's obvious <laughs> after the death of Elijah Muhammad to my knowledge the believers chose Wallace or Warith Dean Muhammad Wallace D. Muhammad Elijah Muhammad's son as the new leader I believe there were other candidates I heard Muhammad Ali and some others uh, Farrakhan really wasn't to my knowledge he wasn't even on the list nobody Farrakhan exaggerates. He was Farrakhan is a great spokesperson. Very articulate. He's a good representative. They did not Farrakhan paints himself over exaggerate himself more than what he actually was. The people in the nation of Islam, especially those close to Elijah Muhammad, they weren't thrilled with Louis Farrakhan. To my knowledge, the people, the believers, voted Wallace Muhammad as their leader. Now, there are many who will say, Wallace Muhammad destroyed the nation of Islam. First of all, the nation of Islam just like the Nation of Islam under Farrakhan right now. It's a cult organization. Once the head dies, the body falls. So when Elijah Muhammad died, that was the end. Wallace did not destroy nothing. And even so, the believers, the majority, chose him as leader. Now, if you don't like it, you have two choices. You can leave or you can stay and get with other Muslims or whatever and you can try to remove him from his position. Those are the choices that you have. Wallace Muhammad is not Elijah Muhammad. People know that Wallace Muhammad did not believe that Master Farad Muhammad was God. So he's going to lead differently. If you don't like that, leave. And many did leave. Louis Farrakhan decided to stay. Louis Farrakhan decided to stay. He did not challenge the decision. And he became the national spokesman, representative for Wallace Warith D. Muhammad. When Warith D. Muhammad came into authority, he had to deal with some issues. The nation of Islam was in debt. And he decided to begin to sell off 
a lot of the assets, the properties of the Nation of Islam to pay this debt. He had no choice. Now, actually, he did have a choice. Keep the assets and ask the poor, hardworking believers to go in their pockets to help maintain or pay this debt. And he didn't want to do that. And even he himself, to my knowledge, did not live a life of luxury. He lived a normal life. He did not try to live in a mansion and all this kind of stuff. I, I'm told that he worked a regular job. People like Farrakhan want to live high in the hall. Elijah Muhammad lived lavishly high in the hall. Wallace Muhammad, whether you like him or not, he did not destroy the nation of Islam. What destroyed the nation of Islam was the people being mindless zombies. This is the thing I notice about, especially these pro-black Americans. You don't want to take responsibility for nothing. You don't want to hold yourself accountable and responsible for nothing. Oh, Wallace destroyed them. No, you did. If you don't like him, if the people didn't like him, you leave or y'all form a coup or whatever it is and take him out of office. You, you decided to do nothing. That's your fault. He changed the teaching. Whatever the problem is, it, it's your fault. Because the nation of Islam was supposed to belong, also belong to you. And you let it all happen. Did you open your mouth? Did you try to do anything? No. Wallace did everything. Wallace didn't do no more than you let him do. The majority of the people follow Wallace. His leadership, he's the leader. And those who didn't, they left. When I got sick of screwing around with the Nation of Islam, I just left. I saw that Louis Farrakhan was grandiose, incompetent, and foul. I'm done with this. And I left. Now, unless somebody put a gun to your head, Somebody threatened your life. Well, you know, you, hey, brother, you, y'all can't leave. Once you, there was a rumor. Once you join the Nation of Islam, you can't get out. There was a rumor. Maybe back in the day, it might be a little true. Because some of these people still had a gangster mentality. Oh, you know, brother, you, can, you can't leave like that. But nobody threatened me. I left. They didn't want to listen to what I had to say. My voice means nothing. I'm, I'm gone. I'm, I leave. That's what you do. We don't want to hold ourselves accountable for nothing. We don't want to be responsible for nothing. In religion, we blame the devil. The devil made me do it. The devil didn't make you do a damn thing. That's something you always wanted to do. The devil made me do it. And of course, the ever famous, the white people. Blame the white people. And that's true to a certain point. But after a while, that gets redundant. Here you are. You get millions and millions of dollars out of the economy. You're driving pretty cars. You're educated. The white man allows you to do many, many things. No, it's you. you. You're the problem. Don't want to take responsibility and hold yourself accountable for nothing. Excuse maker. 